Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by the one, the only, the Armenian bulldozer, Rich Stambolian. Ah, bah, 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 bah. How do you say bulldozer in Armenian? Uh, you just say it with an accent. That's it. I don't think they have a word Bull- for it. Bulldozer. <laughs> like that? <laughs> uh, you know, dude, a couple months ago, I got a message from some guy. He's like, he, he, mm-hmm. he's a viewer of ours. He's Armenian. Okay. And sure. he's like, oh, did you guys meet at the Armenian church? Like, that's so cool that you guys do this. And he was talking about like Arme- mm-hmm. like Armenian friends. He did this whole thing. It was like a nice email. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but like, that's the least common thing Rich and I have in common. Right. It's, it's being Armenian. Like, it, it has no part in our friendship. He's like, really? He's like, so you guys just happen to randomly meet and become friends? I was like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> we didn't become friends because we're Armenian. He's like, that's actually, and he was stunned by this. Stunned. Let me tell you something. Armenians, uh, per capita, Armenians get real effing horny when you tell them you're Armenian, and then they ask you about Armenian friends. Yes. And um, usually my answer is like, listen, I know like two Armenians, and I met like you, and I met the other one three years ago, and that's Harry. And that's it. Oh, Harry's that Virginian. Is yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. You know? Um, but the so same thing with Harry, know, I, too. I, Harry's the same exact yeah. boat. Like, we just, we became friends. That's like, we don't even, mm-hmm. I don't, I think we've had like five or six conversations about Armenianness. I guess. Yeah. I mean, I speak anyway. it, but I, I think it bursted this guy's bubble. He got very, he was like, really? It's like, so you, you guys walk it and talk it. <laughs> you guys aren't super Armenian. I'm like, no, man. I'm like, <laughs> you could, you could pass for a guy named Sargev opening his, his hookah bar slash. Uh, uh, illegal time, poker dude. room. I could I could pass for <laughs> any 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 shady possible Eastern European businessman or Iranian Persian businessman or anything that that's a little off center. I could pass for. Can your third can your third in- incarnation be the Arab oligarch? I would love it. That that's that's what I want. There you go. In life, guys, this is a show all about professional wrestling, not for our um, disconnect from being Armenian in our relationship. Uh, <laughs> we've been doing a show for almost <laughs> 10 years now, and, uh, I feel like we've kind of hit this amazing what? point in the, doing the show where it's so much more mm-hmm. fun doing it this way. Our chat room is unbelievable. We got this unbelievable group of people. If you're listening to the podcast, mm-hmm. you can listen to us live each and every week, generally on Thursdays now, since AEW came in a mix. And since we've been in quarantine doing a show on Thursdays, uh, from 11 to about 12.30 every day. Also, this Saturday, we'll be doing a live watch-along for the AEW Double or Nothing pay-per-view. Uh, we'll be taking mm-hmm. your phone calls. We just got this phone system here installed. We took calls last week. It was so much fun uh, for the last uh, for Money in the Bank. We're going to do it again for AEW. Uh, we're going to have a call screener this time. So that's going to help oh, thank a God. lot. Yeah, thank God. We're going to have a call screener. So we're going to be taking your phone calls, hanging out with you. Uh, you guys were awesome in the super chat, so I want to get that out of the way, obviously, and just remind everybody, if you listen to this on Friday or Thursday night or Saturday morning, uh, come back to us Saturday night. We're going to be doing it live here on YouTube. Uh, Rich, a lot going on in pro yeah. wrestling, a lot of good, a lot of bad. Uh, I want to oh start off with the, um, with the, uh, Shad story. Uh, one half of crime time. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Yeah. Um, he went to the beach with his family and a riptide came and essentially took him and his son mm-hmm. and um, lifeguards came to rescue them. He pointed to the direction of his son. They rescued his son, but they lost him at sea in the water. And generally it takes about two to three days for uh, the body to surface. And it did. And uh, yesterday we found out that, uh, you know, he had drowned in the water. Very sad. It, it, Really, I mean, just really hit a lot of people uh, hearing this because it was this guy was such a selfless guy. You heard stories about him all the time. He was really thoughtful Mm -hmm. in pro wrestling of other people. Uh, He I believe he stopped an armed robbery about a year ago. Mm -hmm. So um, just just terrible, terrible, terrible news there, Rich. Yeah, it's awful, man. Um, he seemed like a really good dude. Uh, it looks like nobody had a bad thing to say about him. I I was hoping for like that miracle where he kind of just they, they're doing like the patrol and they see him there. But, you know, rest in peace, Shad, man. It's, it's very unfortunate. Our thoughts go out to the family. You yeah. know, um, crime time was a lot of fun, dude. 
Crime time was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, that it's a gimmick that wouldn't happen today, I feel. Uh, you know, they they had a lot of fun with the gimmick. It was they they enjoyed mm -hmm. doing it. It was it was enjoyable to watch and and that's what really matters. Uh memorable characters that were hysterical. Mm -hmm. Um just uh, a shame. 39 years old. The dude was freaking young. Yeah. Young dude. Uh, you feel terrible for the family and, of course, his wife and his son. Uh, also, another um, depressing topic, which I, I, I want to spend a little bit more time on this. The shit sure, thing. I, sure, I sure, can't. Sure. It, it, it's, it's so sad. But, it's very upsetting. Uh, yeah. uh, the Dark Side of the Ring episode of, on Owen Hart aired this Tuesday. Uh, bringing in o almost 350,000 viewers, the highest rated show ever for Vice. So, Whoa. I mean, this solidified, I guess, a season three here between the Benoit. But Benoit had the other, uh, the other high number. But between the Benoit episode and this, they kind of solidified about a season or two of this. Uh, very well done. The Owen Hart one, it was interesting, and I'll tell you why. Um, I had no idea, and you tell me, Rich, if if you feel if you knew this. How mm. I had no idea how um how much disdain Martha Hart had has with fans. <clears throat> Did you know this? Yes. Um I, I oh so I watched this yesterday with my wife and I did too, her takeaway her takeaway was was basically like she, she got very upset, she was crying, and also like she was like, Why would anybody support Vince McMahon after this? Yeah. You know, and it was a good question. I couldn't really answer it. And I think the the Martha Hart thing has been going on in like wrestling fan communities for ages with like the hearsay and like, what did she do? What did she say? And it's very, very convoluted, which and it's something I don't think we should really get into like the minutia of. But um, there's there's like two sides of that story, you know, and I think the dark side of the ring did a really good job with that the other day. Um, uh, it was very tragic, very unfortunate, but it was also like really thought provoking in the way that they went about. How I had no idea that she went back to the scene to check the harnesses and who the yeah. riggers were. And like all the details were completely, I just, I just sat there and was like, Oh, this is so nuts, dude. Like this is so nuts. Right. Yeah. So I, 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 I I saw the episode. I mean, I kind of knew what I, I saw the episode last night. I didn't watch it live, but I kind of saw on uh, Wednesday morning all the negative comments mm -hmm. about Martha Hart about how even in even in our Facebook group, like people are writing like, oh, she's doing this all for money. Oh, uh, she you know, she talks about WWE not profiting, but she's probably like it, it's <clears throat> so much negativity and it comes from a weird place, right? It comes from a place where people think she's gatekeeping owen content which right she i mean she is because she doesn't want a company that in her mind and in many people's mind is the cause of owen's death due to neglect and negligence exactly on what they were doing uh and she doesn't want them profiting from it and I, there's nothing wrong with that and i can't imagine and i wrote and i actually i never responded to these things and i did and i wrote how can you, I'm like, you don't know what kind of position this woman's in. She could do whatever the hell she wants. She lost her husband. They were together mm -hmm. since they were 15 years old. Her husband dies in this horrific death in front of 20,000 people. And the company decides to continue the show. And she finds out in a very bizarre way. And then they use footage of the funeral on, uh, on TV. Like, just terrible and she's like these people are sick and i'm not gonna support yeah. them listen she got a tremendous settlement from this company she got about 18 million dollars in 2013 and mm -hmm. she took a lot of that money and she started the owen hart foundation and it and she she did a lot in the name of owen that is not discussed mm -hmm. too often she took care of two small kids seven-year-old and a three-year-old and these people are just – they're angry that you can't get Owen content. And she – and I went down this rabbit hole, dude. And for years, she's been villainized. For years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a weird, like – I think, like, obviously, you know, when Vice does these Dark Side of Wrestling episodes, this one was an interesting focus on, like, a more, like, kind of obscure but weird side of a story, you know, that always floated around. You know, of course, you're going to get, like, the Montreal – 
Oh, Rich froze here. He's probably going to come back in a second here. Uh, but while we get Rich back, I, I mean, just just to kind of think about this, how how do you just as a fan, right? Like to think about this as a fan. Um, Vin, it, it it's not about taking the blame, right? Like, I, I job get, hold on, you you totally broke up, dude. Nope, hang on, let me try to get Rich back. I don't know why. Oh, Rich, you there? Yeah, 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 I'm back. Yeah, you totally dropped out. I don't know if your VPN's on or not. No, I, I was terrified because they're doing a lot of construction across the street, uh, and I'm like, oh, great, they hit the cable wire. <laughs> uh, you want to start again? Because I we got none of that. Okay, so basically, this episode of Dark Side of the Ring um, was a little more fascinating because this was extremely real, right? And um, I forgot who said it uh, in the piece, but it was like when a when fantasy meets like hard reality, this is exactly what happened, you know. Yeah. And going into it, everybody pretty much was like, he shouldn't have been doing this to begin with. Like, why was this asked of him? You know. Yeah. It's, I, it's terrifying. It is. So there's a lot of misconceptions. Like the pe the riggers were uh, the people that did stings, but it wasn't the clip right that they used. Uh, the original story was that Owen hit the release by himself and Martha's I don't I don't I got I don't know the exact thing but Martha says that's not true. Um they were going to move the trial that she wanted the trial in Kansas City because mm -hmm. you could uh get punitive uh punitive punishment on the company mm -hmm. and Vince wanted it in Connecticut and make it a civil thing. So it, it it was it went it was bad, it was it was really bad. Uh, you know I can't blame Martha for anything. She did nothing wrong. She's the one that's suffering more than anything else. Uh, I and it seems like to me the thing that really drove her nuts is the fact that WWE continued to show. And you got to remember, like if this <laughs> happened today, how they could never continue a show, or would they? Do you think they would continue a show today? If if one Ooh. of their 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 top, no, I'm not I'm not saying top of uh, one of their most recognizable names died in the ring. Um, so let's go into that a little bit. Let's explore that situation. I mean, it's a terrible situation, but the one thing that they touched on in that episode of Dark Side of the Ring was that this was a crime scene, and they moved a dead body yeah. that plummeted to the ground, and there's blood on the ground, and the 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 boards in the ring were broken, right? Yeah. That's a crime scene. The cops should have immediately just shut down the venue, give everybody yes. refunds, say, listen, we need to investigate this ASAP, you know? Um, and this was in 1999. I think in 2020, 21 years later, you would get more of a hands-on, like, everything's getting shut down. We're on the scene. Nobody move, you yeah, know? That, that's and actually, you got to get... That's the best point there. Rich, you, mm -hmm. I think you hit the that. That's something that's never discussed, and the fact that how do you how does somebody plummet eighty feet to their death in front of twenty thousand people, and mm -hmm. he there's no there's no crime scene. Uh, right. Oh, he was dead when they took him out of that ring. Mm -hmm. He was. I mean, he was practically. Uh, they, they were they were trying to resuscitate him, but he was he was gone at that point. Um, mm -hmm. how, how do you not look at this and say, maybe someone pushed him, maybe somebody, uh, manipulated. I'm not saying that that's what happened. Right. But as an investigator, mm -hmm. you have to immediately look at those things. Right. You can't just um, say like, oh, okay, let's just move the body out and continue a show. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, I mean, listen, so I, the, the heat did not come down on them like it would today. No. No, not at all. Um, I just it's it's like seeing Jr's perspective too was very like off putting, especially just like what he was saying, and then him telling the story about how uh, he hears Kevin Dunn on the microphone saying, "Oh, by the way, we're back in like ten, not giving him the countdown." Yeah, you know. Um, I don't think that stuff would fly at all today, um, and that's just like the most. It's like the most carny thing to react in the way they yeah. did. Right. Listen, and not to defend like, WWE, right? But you No, 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 not maybe at all. The, but maybe the maybe the shock 
of what's going on, you don't think you're not prepared for something mm. like this either. Right. But I do think like it it's a carny business and for the for the most part, and you know, especially in the late nineties, and then just to have that like, oh, there's nothing to see here, there's nothing to see here mentality was just a mistake, you know. Yeah. Uh just it, it, what a what a devastating moment in the history of pro wrestling. Um it's just crazy how mm. I mean just thinking about the fact that like I know like Jim Ross's comment was kind of to maybe egg on uh Kevin Dunn a little bit, but mm. I I don't the fact that they continued the show is nuts, right? It's crazy. It's just nuts. Yeah. But yeah, I don't I don't look at them and say I, I actually have a very um, I know a lot of people don't like this, but I have a very um, good understanding of people not reacting the best in, in like tragedy. Right. Mm-hmm. Like when something tragic happens uh, for like looking at it the next day, you could say they shouldn't have ran the show. But at the moment, you the panic and the, and the chaos and the, and the craziness, like you don't know mm-hmm. how to react. And there's so many different elements that come into play. Where, yes, part of it is the show must go on, right? That's the mentality. And then you think right. you got all these people in the audience, and you got it just there's so many different elements that the decision maker has to make, and that person is Vince, obviously. And mm. you know he didn't make the right call, but I don't necessarily think that that's where the problem is here. I think the problem is mm. just a combination of everything. Right. Right. Um. It's a, it's a, it was it's very heavy. It's a very heavy thing to talk about and think about. You know, I can't imagine like what what how that production came about. You know, especially talking with Martha and um, Oge, you know, and the and Owen's daughter also. You know, just reliving that. It's it's the most one of the most unfortunate things to happen in wrestling for sure. Yeah, uh, the hatred they have towards wrestling is is interesting though. Mm. Um, by the way, and then that, well, that you know, un- understandably, but you know, that family got torn apart from this because. A lot of, mm-hmm. you know, people say, like, why did she settle? Uh, a lot of that had to do with pressure from the family. Um, you know, there was a lot of pressure from the Hart family on Martha to settle and to make this not as big and let it go away a little bit because mm-hmm. you got a family dynasty of pro wrestlers. You either married a wrestler right. or you are a wrestler and you all work for Vince at some capacity. Mm-hmm. So there was a ton of pressure coming on. So, listen, I understand why she reacted the way I don't understand so much hatred towards this woman, uh, for right, trying right. to do the right thing for her family. Uh, that, that, that I, I actually was caught off guard. I knew there was a little bit of it. I had no idea it was this much. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Wrestling fans, oddly, a lot of wrestling fans, oddly treat her like the Yoko Ono of wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Shock. Uh, 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 shocking. Anyway, uh, I thought shocking. it was, but very good job by dark side of the ring this season. Yeah. Uh, they did a great job. At uh, you know, listen, forty. They tried to tell the whole Owen Hart story in in forty five minutes. I mm-hmm. think it would have been better if they did a two parter. Maybe made the mm-hmm. se- you know the season premiere next year, and you yeah. could have told the whole beginning story of Owen's career. Uh, they kind of glossed over a lot of parts. Um, also something to remember that Bret Hart match at WrestleMania ten, Owen and Bret. Mm-hmm. My God, what an underrated match! Oh, um, so great. So good. And you know what's great about that match? Mm. The dynamic of two brothers. And Brett did everything to make Owen look unbelievable. Absolutely. That was there was such a great match. What was the what was the headliner of WrestleMania 10? Was it was it Hogan or was it Sid and Taker? No, no, no. no, no. I, don't that, remember. That's, no. I that Sid and Taker was after that. Uh WrestleMania. Hmm. And let's see. Well, you had the ladder match, right? That was a big match. Mm-hmm. That's when everybody remembers. I think that's why the, the ladder match overshadowed the Brett Owen match. Uh, mm-hmm. Brett defeated Yoko for the WWE title. That was the main event. Okay. With uh, Roddy Piper as a special guest referee. So and Brett did a- double duty at WrestleMania 10? Dude, this is, yeah, yeah. That was that was a tournament, right? They had that tournament. Okay. With Luger. Uh, because remember, Luger and Brett both got eliminated at the same time for the rumble. Mm-hmm. You so, have such a good memory for this stuff. I do. It, it's bizarre. I don't have a memory for anything other than this, actually. 
Uh, How about we take a breath and let's get silly? Okay, let's do it. (laughs) Let's do it. Uh, Let's see. Owen versus Brett was Uh the first match, went 20 minutes. Bam Bam Bigelow defeated Doink and Dink. Uh, It was Bam Bam and Luna. Randy Savage's last WrestleMania against Crush. Yeah. Alondra Blaze versus, versus Leilani Kai, men on a mission, and defeated the Quebecers. Yoko defeated Lex Luger by DQ. Earthquake defeated Adam Bomb. Razor Ramon defeated Shawn Michaels in that ladder match, which is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And uh, Brett versus Yoko. Also, yesterday was the uh, ninth anniversary of um, the Macho Man's passing. It which was. F- yeah. Effing bizarre. Very bizarre. Mm-hmm. Very bizarre. Uh, AEW last night, decent go home show. I gotta tell you, decent go home show. You loved it. You loved it, right? Yeah, yeah. I I thought it was okay. Uh huh. I didn't love it. Did you love it, or you thought it was fine? I thought it was great. I enjoyed it a whole lot. I enjoyed it a lot. I didn't even let me tell you something. I didn't even watch Raw this week. I turned it on for two seconds and went. "Mm, It was not good. No, it was not good. Mm, No. And uh, yesterday I was flipping a little bit back and forth between AEW and NXT, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I think I think we're seeing like the oddball fans start to turn on AEW a little bit because like pretty much like almost everything I was tweeting out yesterday, a few people were just like disagreeing and saying that this was like a garbage go home show. I don't think so, man. I think the last 10 minutes were fantastic. Adam Page's 100 uh, 100 yard clothesline. Forget yeah. it. That's yeah, that great. great. Um, but it sets up. It set up. I think perfectly for Saturday. You know, it did its job, right? Yeah. I. I. I on paper, the show was great. Um, mm-hmm. but imagine if there was a crowd and how the reaction would have been for a lot of these things. This is the problem that both WWE and AEW are suffering mm-hmm. from, and NXT as well. NXT the most, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think the NXT stock has plummeted tremendously since AEW. They've been going head to head with AEW. Um, mm-hmm. I, I would imagine the best thing for them is to move the show to uh, Tuesdays for now. Absolutely. And I'll tell you why. Uh, the reason why they're not on Tuesdays is because, first of all, they want to screw AEW and that kind of backfired on mm-hmm. them. But they like to keep that Tuesday spot open just in case they uh, Fox moves them to Tuesdays. Right. So, or, th- you know, they, they, there, there is that concept that they might move. Fox renewed them mm-hmm. on Fridays for another year. You know, for really? the day. Not, not a cancellation for the show, but kept them for the fall schedule for, for Friday. So, why not move NXT to Tuesdays? And, you know, now you know what that number is on, on that day. You know that there mm-hmm. are most likely a million and a half to two million wrestling fans that are interested to watch live on Wednesday night to some extent, why not? I would say, you know what? Let me change that. I think it's a million and a half. So you got a million and a half. So if you're doing 800,000 people per show, mm-hmm. uh, that's a nice, that's a nice chunk for a Tuesday for USA. Mm-hmm. So do you think if they move to Tuesday, the numbers would just get bigger because there's no visual competition? Cause like yes. you're looking at kind of like a split thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're you're splitting uh, that number regardless, and you're having people bounce back and forth. the The notion that mm-hmm. AEW fans aren't watching NXT or NXT fans aren't watching AEW that's not true at all. People are bouncing. Yeah, obviously mm-hmm. NXT has a stronger 50, 50 plus, and AEW mm-hmm. has a stronger eighteen to thirty four, eighteen to forty, whatever they're doing. Um, you're going to you're hurting the product by keeping it on Wednesdays, and I think right now they won't do it because that's a loss. They'll look at that as losing, but. For the fans, mm. I would love it to be on Tuesday. I hate doing the double duty thing. Yeah. Like, I know it's a Monday Night Wars and you're flipping, but you don't need to do that anymore. Right, right. You can DVR, you can chill. You don't got to flip. You don't got to flip too anything. I mean, I flip just a little bit, you know, like here and there in the commercials. But what are you I, wanna, I like, I like to keep on? up with it. What are you I'm primarily... usually staying on AEW. Yeah, me too. Because, me too. you know, it's still new. It's still new. Um, what they've done during the quarantine has been great. Um, it's fun. The match quality has been pretty excellent so far, right? Storyline's pretty good. Um, it just feels a little fresher. Um, I want to say it does feel nicer, right? Hmm. Then, like, because I feel like there's that perception with WWE where they are the corporate tyrants, right? Sure. 
And I think you don't get that with AEW at this point because everybody's kind of working their ass off and they want to be, they have no restraints as far as like, go out there and this is how your match is going to go, right? Um, and I thought of that yesterday during the Kushida match. And I think we're both, it's safe to say that we're both big fans of Kushida, right? I uh, He's unbelievable. I mean, what a talent where do you, that guy is. But where do you see him like going from here Kushida I don't know and that's the biggest thing right. like NXT so here's mm. the thing right um and, and I'd love to get the opinion of the guys in the chat for this mm. I'm I'm a fan of pro wrestling I'm not a fan of a brand right and and I don't right I love WWE I love the product that they create most mm. of a, a lot of the time right now they're in a really bad situation and I'm not I'm I'm not looking. I don't. I'm, I don't hold their ratings against them. I don't hold their lack of creativity mm. against them at this moment. This is they are trying something in a terrible situation where you have no audience, where majority of mm. what they do relies on an audience. Everything they do relies on an audience. Um, yeah. The way they work relies on an audience. The way they talk relies on an audience. So it's mm. going to be awkward. It's not going to be good. AEW, on the other hand, has taken the model. And they've experimented because they can. They can make mistakes. Right. You know, like you right. said, they are WWE is the established entity. They are they are the driving force. Mm. It is harder for them to pivot. It is harder for them because there's so much bureaucracy and there's such a such a complex level of coming up with ideas. You know, it's, it's a weird not system. like it's not four guys and Tony Khan. It's a writing team, mm. it's producers, it's agents, it's uh, you know, you gotta you have it's a it's a multiple plethora of people they gotta work with. So AEW has the advantage where they could pivot, they could shift quicker, and they can make mm -hmm. changes because the 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 negative outcome is far less for them compared right. to WWE. It's, it's at this point, it's constantly evolving. It's still evolving. It hasn't even been a year yet. And you're getting kind of like new things. And sometimes when stuff doesn't work, they take it off TV. You know, like um, when they were doing the, um, I think it was the Nightmare Collective with Brandy. Right? It didn't work. And that kind of fell through. And they were just like, yeah, you know what? Let's move on. It's You can yeah. do that, you know, as opposed to WWE where they will, they will hold on for dear life to something that is completely falling apart that they think will work it's almost yeah. like a joke right yeah by the way um i, I do want to say with w with on the aw side like you want to talk about let's let's talk about the product like i a uh, transfer he mentioned uh brody lee in the chat room i agree with mm. him on this i d i'm not crazy about how they're you i didn't like how they used them this week i think Why? a lot of his weakness i'll tell you what happened and i don't blame him right mm -hmm, i think mm -hmm. he got exposed and that's the worst thing you could do in the in, in wrestling is is exposing the talent. He's never been a promo guy, right? And this guy's mm -hmm. been on a a great trajectory with his promos, his new character, his his confidence, his promos. Mm. But he's still a guy that's not a promo guy, right or wrong? Are, are, do you agree with me so far? I think he's a guy that has the potential to be a great promo guy, and yeah. he's getting his feet under him. He's getting yeah. So now you have the audience right and the audience mm -hmm. is a lot of the people in the back throughout mm -hmm. his promo they're screaming they're they're yelling he's hearing mm -hmm. everything that they're saying and he was getting really distracted by it mm -hmm. if you watch you they it, threw him off they did throw him off his pacing totally mm -hmm. got thrown off because he was trying to i think what happened he got distracted okay. and he tried to cover it up at first and he tried to play with them and telling them to shut up whatever and it just it's not it's not just noise, it's actual words that you're hearing now because it's not like 20,000 <laughs> yeah. or 10,000 or 5,000 yeah. or 1,000 people yelling. It's like 20 and that's mm. all you could focus in on. He really lost that promo on me. It it got it, it fell apart. Mm. And not, you know, obviously that that's you exposed, you know, his weakness a little bit and he's going to get better, but mm. um I think he's really suffered from the lack of the audience. His debut should have been humongous. Uh, mm -hmm. the heat with John Moxley should have been tremendous, but really, what are you going to do? You can't stop the program. You got to do it. Right. My, my counterpoint to that is look at the, that quick turnaround for the evolution of the dark order. 
You know, you went from guys in sweatsuits and floppy masks to actually having more of a sound stable. I think that's the positive of this whole thing. Yeah. No, listen, I, I, I want to see what they do. And, I, and I've, I'm, I'm really curious what they've cut back mm. without having the audience. Like, what were some of the plans that were playing into this? Obviously, the mm. Jericho, uh, the inner circle and the elite stuff, that was going to the payoff was going to be that cage match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's not that's not happening right now. So they're doing uh, they're doing that brawl uh, at the 50 yard line. The ring is going to be set up, which is cool. I mean, it's different. A lot of smoke and mirrors here. But, uh, mm. you know, everything got thrown off for everybody. So I'm not holding anything against any of them when it comes to their product right now, mm. because this is very difficult. NXT, on the other hand, the 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 stock of NXT started plummeting long before this. And right. I don't do you think it's because they're going up against a new new product? You know, it's the new girl in town, the new boy in town. You got the hots for him. He's an mm -hmm. athlete. He looks good. So now you're interested in him rather than the really stable one that you were really dating before. Or do you this think it's got a mohawk? This one's got a mohawk. Yeah. AEW's got and a, a chain wallet and a chain wallet. Yeah. And Janko jeans. Can he wear Janko Janko jeans. In 2020. Cargo shorts. Cargo, yeah, 2020. Camo cargo shorts. In 2020. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. do, do you think NXT has fallen because of AEW being, I guess, I'm, I'm going to use this term loosely, cooler? Or do you think it's because going to TV and adding another hour didn't translate so well? Can you repeat that? You kind of, you kind of cut off right there. Do you, think, do, you think AEW, do you think AEW is doing better as far as perception goes? because it's newer and cooler or do you think they're doing better because nxt tv has suffered for the two hour you know since going to two hours i think it's a combination of both um i think they keep it fresh and they keep introducing and reintroducing other characters and letting guys shine a little bit you know um and you can tell at this point like who they're really going to be focusing on darby allen hangman uh sammy guevara right yeah as far as the tags go you have tons of great tag um teams and I, I i'm i'm excited for the company again because it's fresh and it is cool and as a wrestling fan and a wrestling podcaster i like that there's two different shows on wednesday night you know but i think the like we were talking about before that wwe mentality of like we need to force this down your throat is hurting not only raw and smackdown but definitely nxt i think nxt if they didn't if they didn't lose in the ratings and get on network TV, I guarantee you that product that was streaming uh, that would have been streaming on the network would have been a billion times better. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with uh, you. We got five dollars from Aaron Banks. What's the question or the statement you want to? Read uh, a statement. I like watching the pay per view live stream with you guys, but I find it difficult to watch any wrestling right now with no crowd during the week. Aaron Banks, thank you so much for that. Uh, yo, listen, mm, dude, I get it. I get it. It's not easy. It's not an mm. easy watch, and you shouldn't watch something that you're not enjoying. Mm. I, I mean, right. that, that's that, and that's the thing. Like, don't feel bad that you're not enjoying AEW. Don't feel bad that you're not liking NXT, or you need to defend mm. why you don't like something. And uh, dude, you don't like it. You don't like it. That's cool. Yeah, that's it. Who cares? Just if you disagree, you disagree. That like That's something. cool, dude. Yeah. If you like exactly. someone's loving something, don't go and shit on what they love. Don't shit. On, well, I what think was the, what, what was the line? Um, don't shit in my mouth. <laughs> don't shit on my Oreos, bro. Don't yuck my yum. Don't yuck my yum. You don't yuck my that, yum. That was the one. That's I think there's is. a way to disagree with somebody, but there's also a way to be a, a complete douche about it and be like, well, actually, let me tell you why you're wrong, which I think anybody who's a fan of anything does perpetually yeah uh aw double or nothing this was going to take place in las vegas uh mm -hmm. at the mgm grand but we are doing this at at uh in jacksonville so they're going to be doing it at the same venue they've been doing all the shows on which is a great venue for them to have and that they have an Absolutely. advantage there over wwe and, and nxt with this uh let's go down this card uh some of the stuff Got has it. changed obviously but here is the card and this is going to be fascinating um, you have Dustin Rhodes versus Sean Spears. By the way, we are doing a watch a along one. on Saturday. So uh, I'll be with you guys Saturday, probably before the show. Rich, are you joining me on this? 
Oh, I'm going to join you, buddy. Oh, we yeah. got to figure this one out. We're going to take some phone calls. Listen, if you want to come by I'm here, eat. I'm done with quarantining. I'm going to eat my spaghetti. I'm going to eat spaghetti all night on the air. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. nice I'm not done with quarantining. Noodles. I'm not. Okay. I'm not coming near anybody until June 1st. I'm o I'm over. I'm over all at, this at the earliest. I'm over it. I'm not doing a mask. I'm I don't not know doing where, it, but I'm done. I don't know where you've been. I don't know where Deegan's been. Deacon's been I don't know where Deegan this I don't know where Deegan the Seinfeld has been. Deegan the Seinfeld. Uh Dustin Rhodes no? versus Sean Spear. Deegan Seinfeld. I love that. <laughs> De uh, no, no, Deegan the Seinfeld. <laughs> Deegan the Seinfeld. Yeah, I love it. Uh Dustin Great. Dustin Rhodes versus Sean Spears in a singles match. You mm -hmm. have a uh, private party in the pre-show match. Private party versus the best friends. I have 5,000 mm -hmm. messages coming on my phone. From, it's going to be uh, fun. Sit is the Citizen app. I'm sure some guy in Bayside has lost his mind and is running nude in the streets, and they're letting me know. Uh, Dr. Bob Britt said he Baker, had to leave, so maybe it was him. Maybe it was him. Uh, Britt Baker DMD versus uh, Chris Stratlander. Britt Baker took a nasty fall. Uh, yeah. Nyla Rose fell on her leg. And uh, I don't know. She, she she did not look great after that. So we'll see what happens with this. Uh, so let let me let me go through the card here. Sorry, uh, I'll go in order. So you got Private Party versus the best friends in the pre-show matches to determine the number one contender for the tag team mm -hmm. championship. Dustin Rose versus Sean Spears in a singles match. Nyla Rose versus uh, Hikaru Shida. I don't know why I have a problem reading the name. Uh, in a no DQ, no count out. <laughs> AEW Women's World Title Match. You got Darby yep. Allen versus Cole Cabana versus Orange Cassidy, Ray Phoenix, Scorpio Sky, Kip Sabian, Frankie Kazarian, L Luchasaurus, and uh, Turnbuckle Al in a casino ladder match. Who do you think Turnbuckle Al is? I don't know, dude. I was thinking about that. Is there anybody that mm. pops that pops up here? Who's free that could be in this? Well, here's the thing. Who do you think will win? Right? Do any of these guys seem like a, a, a number one contender? Like, I would say Luchasaurus winning would be really cool. That would be cool. Ray Phoenix winning would be cool. I would How like about, to see Ray versus. Go ahead. How about you ready? I got, I got two, I got two wild ones for you too. I got it. Brian Cage. Go ahead. Yeah. Brian Cage. You kind of deflated me with that. <laughs> Did I? I'm so sorry, man. Well, who yeah, do you have? No, it's fine. I well, I'm not saying mine are better, but um, I travel. I don't know if travel restrictions have been eased, but I got one or two picks for you. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Kota Ibushi. Okay. Tanahashi. I don't think any of them. Because. <laughs> Because you still have that unfinished uh, Jericho thing. You do have that unfinished Jericho thing. I think they'll do that. Eventually. And and there's still the Japanese connection with Moxley. I don't know. I don't I don't think they'll do it for this. Uh, you think Kota Bushi should be put in this match? I don't know. They'll I, th I feel like that would be like just a that's just a wild guess, dude. <laughs> no, I like listen, dude. I would love that to happen. I would love that to happen. Uh, but who, maybe, who's available? Maybe, Brian Cage is available, right? Brian Cage is available. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I don't want to see that guy get on a ladder. He's so big. Yeah, big dudes so on ladders big. make me very, very uncomfortable. Maybe it's Doctor Luther. Maybe Doctor. Maybe it's some. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe it's somebody that <laughs> nobody cares about. But I'm gonna go with Brian Cage here. Let's let's. I'm gonna. That's gonna, gonna be my you, pick. That's gonna be your pick. Uh, is he your pick to win? Yeah, uh, I think the TBA, if, if it is something, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with him to win. Okay. Um, this is a tough one. Uh, I would say Ray Phoenix. I think if Mox retains a Ray Phoenix Mox match would be pretty dope. Um, a Darby Allen Mox match would be pretty good because they have like a little bit of a history. Scorpio Sky. I think. Kip Sabian. No, I think Kip Sabian, definitely not. Colts is the underdog in this i think but i do think colt is getting a little more serious he, he did a he hit a he hit a giant moonsault yesterday yes he did uh you so know what? Uh, you know who it's gonna be who uh, hold on no you okay never mind no 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 never mind, <laughs> never, mind. <laughs> never mind i was counting days i was off count the days i was counting days uh you got uh mjf Zach jungle Ryder. boy 
I, I, it couldn't, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to go with him, but uh, totally off on the days. Uh, MJF, mm-hmm. Jungle Boy, John Moxley versus Brody Lee for the AW title. You got Cody versus Lance Archer mm-hmm. for the AWTNT championship with Mike Tyson presenting the champion. So Mike Tyson's going to punch somebody, mm-hmm. right? Who's he knocking out? Everybody. Who's he, who's he I think punching? he's knocking out. I think he's going to end up knocking out all of the inner circle. <laughs> Every one of them? Oh, dude, that would be mm-hmm. great. Uh, and Let's then you line got them the all big, up. And then he got the big sta- uh, stadium stampede with Matt Hardy and the elite mm-hmm. versus the inner circle. Um, do, do we see the revival make their debut? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, I think that would be a lot of fun. I think if they got interjected into the tag match for the number one contendership, that would be cool. Um, I think we're going to see the return of Vanguard one in some form during the stampede match. Oh man. There's so much they could do with this. This is a good card, man. It is a good card. Um, It's a really good card. Did you want to see Arn and Jake at least do some kind of street fight angle? I want to see them do something. I don't want them to have a match. I want them to like do right. something though. Just um, get into it. Just get into it. Yeah. Just something. None mm-hmm. of them could. I mean, I guess Arn could take a bump. Jake definitely can't. Imagine so. if Arn and Tully just teamed up on Jake for like two seconds. Arn and I cannot believe Arn and Tully are there, and Jake Roberts mm-hmm. they're the their managers. I think that they're utilizing these guys really well. You know, it's like it's a good throwback. It is a great throwback, and, and they're not—they're um, not making them look weak to heighten the other guys. They're making them look, you okay. know, they're building talent rather than you know looking weak to build talent, which I find interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that's the card. Do you want to go through who your wins are quickly? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Also, a good—I think somebody in the chat room mentioned uh, Pentagon for TBA, which I think would be really awesome. Oh, Pentagon for TBA. Yeah, that could yeah. be a good one because he's not on the card. Pentagon versus Mox. Pentagon versus Mox would be ridiculous. How about Joey Janela? Yeah, I guess so. Because he has a, he has a feud with Kip Sabian. Yeah, that's true. Um, all right, you want let's go through it real quick. We'll just let's say start. like who's winning and who's not. Yeah, let's. Start. All right, uh, C- Cody Lance. Uh, I'm gonna go Cody. I'm gonna go Cody also. Okay. Um, MJF Jungle Boy. I'm gonna go Jungle Boy. Actually, no, I take that back. It's gonna be Lance. You gonna um, go Lance? Okay. I'm gonna go Lance. Uh, I'm gonna say Jungle Boy because I, this is why I say mm-hmm. Jungle Boy. I think it's gonna give more heat on MJF by losing to Jungle Boy. Mm-hmm. I think it helps him lose. Him losing helps his character more than winning does. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like, he's a great heel. I think it works. The Wardlow situation is very interesting. I want to see what that guy could do. He's, I like, I like that he's, he's pretty dominant in the ring, man. Yeah. He's a, he pulls it off, right? Yeah. Um, Mox versus Brody Lee. Mox versus Brody Lee. I'm going Mox. Mox, same here. Um, ladder match. The ladder match, I'm going to go with. Uh, it's hard to tell because we don't know who Turnbuckle Al is, but I'll go with Turnbuckle Al. I'm going to go with Turnbuckle Al, and I'm going to go way out of left field and do and say Cole Cabana. Okay. If it's not Turnbuckle, Turnbuckle Al, I'll go with uh, Luchasaurus. Okay. Um, Nyla Rose and Hikaru Shida? Uh, I'm going to go Nyla. I'm going to go Hikaru Shida. Okay. Uh, Britt Baker versus Chris Statlander. I'm going to go Britt Baker. Agreed. I'm going to go Britt Baker. Uh, private Party versus Best Friend. Let's go Private Party. Uh, I'm going to say Private Party also, unless there's somebody else added to this match. Okay. Um, let's say the Elite versus the Inner Circle. Hmm. There might be some something wacky here, right? I think there is something wacky here. I, I think Inner Circle takes it. Me too. I think Inner Circle it's cool. takes it, but there's something. Mm. There's going to be something. It's cool that if the Elite doesn't win. They don't have to win. They don't have to win. I think, um, I, I, think I would prefer Inner Circle to win. Okay. Uh, Dustin versus Sean Spears. 
I'll go with Sean. I'm gonna go Dustin on that one. Okay. I think he's gonna. Sean I think he'd win it. I think yeah. I think Dustin's gonna win it, and he's gonna be a bloody mess again. All right. I like the picks. I like the picks yeah, here, good uh, picks. guys. Good picks. Submit your viewer questions uh, in the chat. There's gonna be a lot of questions coming in. Uh, send it now. And we're going to prepare to answer your questions. Uh, it could go from anything from old school wrestling to the current product, WWE, AEW, NJPW. Um, just uh, send your questions our way. So, I, I mean, it was a fine card. It was yeah. good. We also have um, uh, In Your House building up for NXT, which I'm very excited for. Uh, mm. I love the fact that they're bringing back these retro shows. Maybe they'll do a Halloween mm. Havoc show next. Somebody needs to do Halloween, Halloween Havoc. I, I don't understand why we don't have Halloween Havoc. I don't, you know, that's a good question because uh, WWE owns it, right? WWE owns it, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. Maybe it's just like they don't want to go. They have that weird problem of like not bringing the retro stuff back only when it suits them, you know? Like they like they do they did that like Starcade live thing for a couple of years, but now it's like a thing, right? They they're doing that every year now. Yeah, I which I I think it's they're just using the name with you know nothing behind it. I feel like yeah. I feel like when they do the Saudi shows, that's that should be called Starcade. I think that should be called Halloween Havoc. <laughs> <Can you imagine? laughs> That'd be so great. We'll just what call it Halloween, Halloween. Havoc. What is this? The only uh, the only match announced for and in your house is chiampa versus Karrion cross which i feel like is going to be a really good match i was on the phone with matt ryan yesterday and i mm -hmm. was i told him that i have i i i don't know how the conversation happened oh because mm -hmm. uh it's possible that the saudis are going to put on a tyson fight right and oh, wow. we were talking about something else and we went into that and i there, there were rumors that it, it was just rumors at the time that it's going to be uh, Holyfield Tyson three in Riyadh. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I, I kind of think like that the Saudis have this bizarre nineties fetish where oh, yeah. they just want to bring back, like they want to do all these like weird nineties thing. And then I was like, what are they going to do? Like, I want them to start remaking nineties, mm -hmm. like cheap, like movies, like the Ernest movies. I want, I want to see like Ernest mm -hmm. goes to Mecca. I, want, I just want to see like weird or like all these 90s movies getting remade in mm. Saudi Arabia going forward. Give me the pitch me the plot to Ernest goes to Mecca, please. So he gets on the plane and he thinks he's going okay. to like an island, right? He's like he, somebody tells him like, oh, you should come to Mecca. I'll give you tickets. Mm. And he thinks he's thinking like it's like a Polynesian island. Do you think and he's going to like you, do you think Ernest thinks he's going to like a mechanics convention? No, no, no. He thinks Mecca is like an island. He thinks like it's okay. like an island, like, and then you could see mm -hmm. like the thought bubble going, and he's like fantasizing mm -hmm. about like, uh, uh, like mm -hmm. this beautiful woman fanning him and giving him like margaritas on the beach, and he has, and I can see mm -hmm. it already. He has his nose, the 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 sunscreen on his Zank. nose, laying there, mm -hmm. and he's on the plane, and he has no idea where he's going, and he gets off, and he's like in the middle of insanity. Were you a big Ernest fan when you were a kid? Hated him, man. He made me so uncomfortable. I never got the appeal. Why? Never got. Did you thought he was him? talking to you. I thought he was. Talking I to was. Me. I it was always jaw, thought. Dude. Why? It was a jaw. Dude, it was a Jim went... Barney, or was it the character, or just it's like you just didn't like because he was like a weird hillbilly. All of it together. I he think thinks it's think MSG, Deacon... but he mistakenly flies to Mecca. I think Deegan should be Seinfeld and you should be Ernest. Ernest? I want to see you in like I want to yeah. see you in that hat. <laughs> Listen, they could do they could uh, do a weekend at Bernie's. You know, with Ernest in oh man, no, no, with the journalists that they murder in that country. Oh boy! All right, yeah. let's take some questions. <laughs> All right, uh, Andrew, how many Macho Man shirts do you own? I own Jonathan? four. Four of them. I own a purple uh, one. I own a green one, and I own two gray ones. Wow, four. Yeah. yeah, they're all the same. It's all the same. They're like the same thing on the chest. Well, no, the uh, the purple one and this one are the same, same exact look, but the other ones mm -hmm. I've cut up the sleeves. Okay, um, but they're the same. It's the same design on the chest. The same design on the chest. Yes, it doesn't matter if it doesn't have any sleeves. It's the same no shirt. sleeves, but same design. <laughs> What's your favorite McDonald's breakfast sandwich? 
I hate McDonald's breakfast sandwiches. I hate fast food uh, breakfast. And you hate Star Wars, too. I don't. Yes, I, I do hate Star Wars. I hate Star I, Wars. I'm going to say it. I know why you hate Star Wars. I know yeah. why you hate Star Wars. Which it's, is, it's, it's, logical, a, it's a valid right? reason. Yes. It's, yeah. a, it's a valid reason for you to hate Star Wars. I I'll feel like if I had the, the same story. situation. If you ask me on Saturday, I'll tell the story why I hate Star Wars on the air. Oh, you have to do the voices, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll um, do the voices. I think mine, mine is a tie. It's the uh, Sausage Egg McMuffin or the uh, Sausage McGriddle. Because you ever have a McGriddle? No, you hate breakfast sandwiches. I have. No, no, no. I've McGriddle had is like, I've had them all. You just don't like them. I try them. I try to like it. Don't like any of them. It, it gives me terrible agita. That's interesting. I get horrible heartburn from it. Um. Okay, let's see what we got here. Chiampa is facing Cross for Cross's first feud. Yes or no? You like it or not? Say that again. Uh, Chiampa facing Cross for Cross's first feud. Yay or nay? Uh, yay. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. I like it a lot. Uh, let's see what we got here. Should NXT redo the NXT theme song uh, in your house, kids, to a rock version? Yeah, I love it. Let's read. Uh, yeah, they need to. They need to make that thing so nineties <laughs> out. Has to be. Uh, absolutely. I would. Yeah. I would love it to be so nineties out, like classic yeah. HBK. Um, maybe mankind shows up. Yeah. Um, Josh asks, "What game would Anchante stream on Twitch?" Very easy. He would just play weird anime games, like the sexualized anime games. Mm-hmm. Like with the like the the girls. Like almost like hentai art, right? Like the girls, like yeah. the big boobs and the like the butts out, like the big butts and the big boobs. That's mm -hmm. what he would play constantly, mm -hmm. and it'd be a card game. I it wouldn't even be like a real game; it'd just be like a card game, like a like a like a virtual poker type thing. Yes, but with no, no, no. Like, I would... like you know, like those card games now that they have. It's like magic. What's so the he's, big he's one? Not streaming a video game. What's he's the big magic one that he's playing? Magic the Gathering, I guess. Not Ma no, the the big the the late like the big card game that everybody plays. I I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Inuyasha. The one, uh, the one it's one Magic the Gathering, Blizzard. dude. No, 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 not like an actual card game, but like a digital card game. Heatstone, Hearthstone. He would play Hearthstone. Hearthstone? <laughs> yeah, is that it? Is that, it? <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, a thing? <laughs> Heatstone. He's played Heatstone. I honestly, I would say, like, as soon as I saw that question, I'm like, oh, he's definitely playing Legion Suit Larry. That is a thing. And he's naked, and oh, he's naked. But on the stream, you have the controller. Anshante has a controller in front of his genitals, so he's not technically naked because he's covering up. But you're just playing Legion Suit Larry for 24 hours straight. Love it. Heartstone. Racking is up a game. them. That's what he would play. Okay. Heatstone. Heat I like Heatstone. Heatstone. <laughs> Uh, I lost my place here. I gotta go back. Uh, what's Rewind. next with uh, what's next with Bailey and Sasha? It looks like they're gonna they're gonna do something together, right? Yeah, and that's where we're at. We're Tag belts at, again? I don't know. I, I, I what do you do with Sasha Banks at this point? I I don't know what the answer is, right? Because it fascinatingly <laughs> enough, she came back and they've done nothing with her, mm -hmm. like zero, and, and that's. I, I don't know why. I, I there has to be a reason why what's going on there. I think not not I don't want to see anybody get fired, but I think re release Sasha Banks and then bring her back three years later. Yeah, that's not bad. I, I'm okay. Listen, I think she could do a lot anywhere else. Uh but I, I I'm gonna guess that she's gonna turn on Bailey and they're gonna have or Bailey's gonna turn on Sasha. Become the baby face. Sasha will be the baby face and beat her at SummerSlam for the title. Okay. Do you do you believe Sasha has a baby face? No, because I, I I think she has that Randy Orton thing where I don't I think she actually hates the fans and she's so much better okay. than the heel. <laughs> I don't think she, I don't career. think she enjoys yeah. Career heel? All right. Yeah, career heel. Interesting. Uh Bachelor three thousand asks, who's your favorite Southern wrestler, past or present? I'm gonna go, go Dusty. First. You're gonna go Dusty. Yeah, Dusty. Um, uh, favorite Southern wrestler, past or present? It's a great question. Uh, obviously Jerry Lawler, right? He has to be up mm -hmm. there. Uh, Dusty sure. Flair. Do you consider Flair a Southern wrestler? 
that's a good question uh i'm gonna say he hovers like he because he was so global right flair doesn't count as that yeah yeah um i think there's so many of those guys like uh ricky morton oh yeah the, yeah ricky morton another there's a lot mm -hmm. there's a lot of those names that we don't even like recognize right yeah 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 there's tons let me, let me i i need um the Freebirds. Southern Wrestling Hall of Fame. Let's see who's in here. Mm -hmm. Slick is in here. Is he a Southern wrestler? Tim Storm sure. got in. Uh, Dr. Death Steve Williams is considered a Southern wrestler. Mm -hmm. Devon Eriks, I guess, right? If you consider Terry Gordy, mm -hmm. Stan Hansen. Oh, Stan Hansen. Great. Terry Funk. Right? Terry Funk. Great yeah. Southern wrestler. Um. This list is fascinating. Rodney Mack is on is in the Hall of Fame of great Southern wrestlers. This is a bizarre list. Like the Fullers were really instrumental in wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, I love I like the Memphis Territory ones because they're so hokey. Tommy Rich, yes. great Southern wrestler. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wildfire Tommy Rich. All those guys. It was uh, beautiful, just for Bobby. One. I'm going dusty. Beautiful Bo Beautiful Bobby Eaton is my pick. Okay. Uh, uh, Large23 asks, do you think calling the Orton versus Edge the greatest wrestling match ever is setting the bar too high? Uh, dude, okay. Can we talk about this for a minute? The fact yeah, yeah. that the term wrestling, right, mm -hmm. is now a stipulation in a match. <laughs> right? We got like, wrestle. Think about that. They've been mm -hmm. saying wrestling and wrestling they're going to have the greatest possibly the greatest wrestling match what have we been doing up until now so what makes it a wrestling match the gimmick is that it's a wrestling match so what makes it a wrestling match long holds chain wrestling a like, lot of mat work right I, I, what makes it a wrestling match? it's all a wrestling match so are we going to see exactly like you said are we going to see a lot of holds and and, you know, just an old school wrestling match. Because I would say, you know what was a great wrestling match? Daniel Bryan and Drew Gulak. Yes. That was a great wrestling match last week. Um, I kind of want to, I kind of want them to up it to like a, like, um, like an Iron Man match. I think maybe we're leading into this. I think we'll eventually lead into something. Right, we had the street brawl. Mm -hmm. Now we're having the wrestling right. match, and what's the blow off? Summer the blow off is going to be a steel cage match. Steel cage. I mean, SummerSlam would be the blow off, I guess. Two out of three fall steel cage. I don't know. I, I I I find it so bizarre on how they keep saying wrestling match, and you can see that that's a Paul Heyman thing. Paul convinced mm -hmm. Vince. He's like, no, no, no. Let's call it a wrestling match. You know, we let's. They're not having a. They're not having a regular match. They're having a wrestling match. Mm -hmm. just weird really weird it's it's a little bizarre <laughs> whatever yeah. they gave uh didn't they do um they they keep adding the greatest things to everything right just everything. like the fascination greatest. with uh the word big like uh in saudi arabia didn't you have like the greatest royal rumble and then the tournament to crown the greatest tag team the greatest yeah the greatest everything like it's everything. the greatest everything it's it again it's like that episode of seinfeld everything's great right when, when did it's not run a show in Saudi Arabia? I don't know. I'm curious here. It's going to have to be next year, right? I don't know. Maybe this year. Probably this year. Saudi Arabia right now has 351 deaths total, and they've had 12 cases like a day. So they, they're... Oh, wow. They're not really suffering from this. So... They're, mm. they're looking to put on like a big event. I think they're going to head back over there. Maybe we could have the greatest wrestling match part two over there. Oh, man. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, who do you think is going to win the tournament for the cruiserweight belt? Kushida, Drake, or Atlas? Uh, I'm going to go with Kushida on this one. I hope they I, do something with Kushida. I really hope they do something with Kushida. Listen, he, mm. was, he was a great junior heavyweight, right? In New Japan. Yeah. So he's a I, multiple time junior champion, right? You know, here's the thing with that title, right? Like, how do you you look at the like what they've done with let me see, WWE Cruiser. The lineage, you're gonna like the lineage? 
I'm looking at the lineage because I want to see. Oh, they're calling it the NXT title now, right? NXT Cruiserweight title? Uh, yeah, they're calling it the NXT Cruiserweight title. So, is this have a different lineage than the previous? Or is this the I same think the lineage? 205, the 205 title is the lineage. Okay, yes. Yeah. The 205, yeah, that's the lineage. Okay, so you had TJP, right? The first champion. But mm-hmm. in reality, it was not going to be him. Okay. It was supposed to be... Um, Kota uh, Ibushi? Kota Ibushi. Right. He was supposed to be the first. I'm... So then you had... <laughs> so he held it 46 it, it... days. Can I interrupt TJP. for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in retrospect, how over the moon are you that Kota Ibushi told them to F off and just left? Oh, I know. I know. He's like, in no, retrospect. I'm not signing a contract. Like, you guys are stupid. I'm out of here. Can you imagine if he did sign? They wouldn't let him shoot himself in the chest with a Roman candle on the hood of a car and then do a moonsault on, onto other people. No, they definitely would not have let him do, do that. <laughs> So you had, uh, after TJP, 46 days, you had Brian Kendricks hold it for 30 days. I thought Brian Kendricks mm-hmm. was good in that position. Yes, absolutely. Uh, by the way, this is 2016. Look how far back this is. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad we're doing this, by the way. Doing what? Going through this? The uh, going, Yeah, because I feel like this needs to be talked about. I, I think people forget how 2016 feels like it was last year. This is all, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like, this is a long time ago. Uh, Rich Swan held it for 61 days. Mm-hmm. Neville held it 197 days. Probably Neville right now is the best one that they have for that title. Yeah. I thought he was a phenomenal, phenomenal champion. Uh, Akira Tozawa beat him, held it for six days. Then Neville beat him again on the SummerSlam Brooklyn show. And, I'm going to interrupt um, you another, another yeah. time. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think we were wrong about, I think we're wrong about Turnbuckle Al. It's, it's, uh, oh, yeah. Could it be Neville? It's Neville. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That could be it. Good. That, that's great. He's coming back. Pack. Come, pack. Uh, Enzo beat Neville for the title, mm-hmm. held it for 15 days. Then Kalisto beat Enzo, held it for 13. Then Enzo mm-hmm. beat Kalisto in, uh, let's see, a TLC in Minneapolis, held it for 93 days. And then Enzo had to give the title, had to vacate the title because of the accusations of sexual assault and harassment that they found out was fake. Uh, right. Which that makes me, you know what? I'm going to tell you something. People hate him, but my God, to be falsely accused of something yeah. and then like have to defend your whole life. And then now people still look at him that way. Terrible. Forget about what you think. Well, of the also, guy. Mm-hmm. but I mean, it's absolutely terrible. Well, also, it's because like when you when you can't separate the character from the person, you look at the character and you're like, of course he did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cedric Alexander uh, won yeah. the tournament. Uh, defeating Mustafa Ali for the vacated title. He held it for 181 days, Cedric. Mm-hmm. Something people yeah. don't really remember. Then you had Buddy Murphy hold the title for 183 days. He won it at Super Crazy. Showdown in Melbourne, Australia in 2018. Uh, mm-hmm. This was the beginning of Buddy Murphy's rise. Uh, Tony Nice held it for 77 days. Drew Gulak mm-hmm. held it for 108 days. The, and then that was during the 205 Live era, by the way. The 205 Live right. era only had, it had Buddy Murphy, t- uh, Tony Nese, and Drew Gulak. And uh, obviously right. Enzo as well, right? Enzo was, was there. Um, and then you went into the NXT 205 Live era, and you had Leo Rush hold it for 63 days, Angel Garza, 45 days, and Jordan Devlin, 115 plus. Obviously, uh, mm. now we're going to have another one. So uh, what do you think of this? I, I I find the lineage fascinating because like definitely all these guys deserve to have that belt and it's a good group of dudes, right? It's a it's a great group of guys. But if you look at this, so in New Japan, generally what happens is that title is they consider mm. they handle the the cruiserweight, the the light heavyweight or whatever you know light heavyweight, uh, very yeah. differently than WWE. That they actually give it to guys that are on top, but they're not a heavyweight yet. So that's why you've had guys like Kenny Omega hold that title. You've had Kota Ibushi. You've had, I mean, just the list goes on and on of guys holding it's a huge that light heavyweight title. Tremendous list. Liger, so, Sabu. Yeah. Sabu. Tiger Mask, Kenny. Sabu, yeah, Sabu held it for like 
Mm-hmm. Really? Didn't yeah. know that. For like a, for, I don't think he held it for too long. But, but you had you think, a lot of dudes. I don't think they give the title. So th- this title is not like a, you're the top, but you're a light heavyweight. So we're going to give you this. And then mm. slowly you put on some weight and you move up. They don't really do that with this. They just give it randomly. Like, right. Out of all these guys that's gotten really elevated, I would say it would be Buddy Murphy. Mm. Yes. Uh, I think Leo Rush was on his... I, I, the Leo Rush thing is weird. Uh, Buddy Murphy, you're right. He got elevated. Um, for sure, I thought they were going to do something with Drew Gulak until they couldn't come to terms with him. Same thing with Cedric, you know, because it seemed like, oh, cool, Cedric has, has a championship. But then, like, he started, like, floundering a little bit, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, Kushida, see. also a six-time IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champ. Kushida? Yeah. Okay, that's so I'm going with Kushida in this okay. tournament. Like right now, I look at um. Oh, why can't I find the list of light heavyweights? What if Turnbuckle Al turned out to be Turnbuckle Enzo? Turnbuckle Enzo? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What else do we have? Uh, let's see. Um, transferring Heat podcast. It hasn't been talked about yet. So give me a Hogan scenario in which he comes back. Oh, right now, current current climate. Mm-hmm. Okay, you got. I got this. You ready? Okay, uh, you do Hulk yours. Hogan. I'll do mine. Go. Okay, <laughs> it's SummerSlam, right? SummerSlam, empty mm-hmm. building. All of a sudden, it's like it's a match. It's the main event happening. Uh, mm-hmm. It's Seth Rollins and uh, Drew McIntyre in a whatever match. <laughs> They're having the match. All of a sudden, you you hear something. Something's mm-hmm. going on. And here comes a freaking DeLorean ripping through the ramp. The door opens. It's Hulk Hogan. And he goes, he goes, come with me, brothers. We got to change the past. And they, uh-huh. that's how the show goes off the air. And that's it. That's your Hogan return. That's my he Hogan shows return. up in, the t- in a time machine and gets everybody yeah. into the DeLorean. How many yeah, people yeah. are in this DeLorean? Uh, so Jimmy Hart, obviously, is in there already. Uh, yeah, baby. Jimmy Hart. Uh, <laughs> is he driving? Is Jimmy Hart driving? No, no. Hogan's driving. Jimmy okay. Hart's in the back. Uh, Drew McIntyre gets in, Seth Rollins gets in, and Vince. They're not fitting in the thing. You no, need the Vince. train from Back to the Future 3. No, no. They, they, <laughs> they, they, they just all piled in there, and they just take off. I like it. Uh, yeah, that's here, my Hogan Here's mine. Return. Mine's weird. My Hogan return is um, big tag team tournament. There's a, there's a TBA tag team to be announced, right? All of a sudden, you hear Enzo's music, right? You hear the uh, – and he does the promo, right? Yeah. And he goes, he goes, hang on, everybody. Before, before we get to the good stuff, I got to tell you, my name used to be Enzo Amore, but my team is called Enzo Immortal. And then he, put, he, show, he goes, points to the curtain, and it's the Immortal Hulk Hogan. So now you have the tag team of Enzo Immortal, Enzo Amore, Hulk Hogan, and, and they win the tag belt. That, that's your return. No time Hogan? travel. No time it's just travel? New, <laughs> it's just no time travel. No, it's just no, them has... winning the tag belt. But what? Okay, but what are they going in the past? You didn't ask me. Okay, what? Are, where are they going in the past? We got to kill the Hitler, 50s. brother. They're going into the fifties. Okay, we missed our window for killing Hitler, brother. We missed our. Window. <laughs> <laughs> Come with me. We got to change the past. And it's him. It's a. It's a photo of him, right? So he has a mm-hmm. photo of him, like, and it's like from the eighties, like Ultimate Hulk Hogan, mm-hmm. and his mustache okay. is fading away. And it's only the mustache <laughs> fading away, not him. And that's the whole uh, point. Something happened in the 1950s that prevented him from having a mustache, and there's no career. There's no big Hulk Hogan career. The mustache. There's like everything. a butterfly effect. Yeah, the butterfly effect. So they got to stop it. And what they're stopping mm. is just one guy with a mustache committing a crime. And then after that, it's like mm. the Hitler stash almost, right? Nobody wears that thing anymore. Mm. That's Except for doing. Michael Jordan a few years ago. Michael Jordan wears a <laughs> Hitler stash. Yeah. He did a few years ago. Like, you remember when Michael Jordan was in that, uh, Haynes, I think it was a Haynes commercial or like a Fruit of the Loom commercial on the airplane, and he rocked like a, like a, like a weirdo Hitler stash? Yeah. Michael Jordan could rock that. That's fine. That's well, okay. I don't know about that. I don't think anybody could rock that. It's not fine. Michael Jordan it's can do whatever fine. he wants. Brother, we got to go back in time before Masato Tanaka broke my leg, because <laughs> otherwise I got I to gotta convince myself to be a wrestler instead of the greatest bass player of all time. 
He played, imagine, uh, imagine that. He, imagine he he changes history and he becomes the basis for Metallica. Oh, oh so good. He would power about. over those guys. Oh man, dude, that's what it is. They're just going back in time to to mm. to make him the bassist for Metallica. Mm. Pre Cliff Burton or post Cliff Burton? Pre, pre. Oh, so like no Cliff Burton. It's Hogan. No, it's Hogan. It's always been Hogan. Oh my God. Brother, I <laughs> gotta convince you not to take the gig. You're gonna slip on some black ice. <laughs> <laughs> so he has to go back in time yeah. to convince bass player Hogan not to join Metallica. No, no, no. He's trying to he's he's going back in time to convince bass player Hogan to join Metallica. Thus erasing himself from history. Er- erasing no, he's still he's still gonna be a wrestler, but he gets he's he's the he's the bass player. So he's both. He's both. Yeah, he's he's both. <laughs> he's Hogan and also the bass player for Metallica. For Metallica, yeah. And he just but does he die it... in the What? Does he die in the car wreck? Does he fall out the window in the car wreck? Yes, he falls out the window. <laughs> so he so he can't be both. He could he could do whatever he wants, dude. It's Hulk Hogan in a DeLorean. That is true. And, um, Andrew Andrew McIntyre for some reason and Vince and Andrew and Vince, yeah, and Vince is now like trying to manage Metallica. Mm. This whole thing has to do with Metallica. I'm changing the whole history. So they go back in the past mm. to have mm-hmm. Hogan join Metallica, and Vince becomes their like manager. Mm. And Drew, okay. I don't even know why Drew and Seth are there. Maybe Drew and Seth just hang out with them like groupies. But essentially, the goal is okay. Vince manages Metallica, and Hogan is uh, is the bassist. Can this can this scenario also end where everybody shows up at a high school auditorium and they give like the greatest uh, graduation speech of all time? Who's giving the speech? Uh, Hogan, clearly. He was like, I had to go back in time and I love San Dimas, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Combine all the movies. Uh, We went down a rabbit hole, guys. All right. What else do we have? Give us some more questions. To get us off this. That's it, man. I think I think I think we ruined it for everybody. (laughs) I I went down a TNA rabbit hole the other day. Yikes. Mm -hmm. I got to like Tess and Albert, like Tess and Albert. Yeah, Uh, Mm -hmm. dude, TNA really there was no chance they were going to survive. No chance. I, I, I just I watched a lot of like 2009 to 2012 and just I, I, because I'm always trying to compare it like, okay, well, do we feel the way that we do for TNA because, and then I, you know, I try to figure out what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't, what? I don't know. Was that aces and eights era? No, pre aces and eights. Like when, when they went, when they went to uh, Monday nights, when they went live, was there any hope On in that company? Yeah. It was there any hope in that company, like becoming a major competitor? Was this during the EV2 versus Fortune thing? I don't remember. Because it was uh, like Fortune was supposed to be like the, the new horsemen in TNA. And then yeah. they brought back the ECW guys for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the ECW I enjoyed guys were, that, to be honest. <laughs> I enjoyed a lot of elements of it, but it just it doesn't. Mm. I don't think th- I think they th- people honestly believed <laughs> that they were going to be this tremendous company. But they had yeah. too much of that WCW stink. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, it was just too much. Too much Jeff. I Jarrett, did like the six sided ring. I hated the six sided yeah. ring, dude. That's what did it for me. I couldn't do it. I could. I could never get mm-hmm. behind it because of the six sided ring. I know some people loved yeah, it. I, I hated I enjoyed it. it. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was cool. I thought it was different. And plus, like, how how else would you have discovered like AJ Styles or Samoa Joe or the Young Bucks when they were Generation yeah. Me or Motor City Machine Guns or when the Dudley Boys went there? That was like the prime time of like TNA, right? Yeah, prime time. X Division. And then what happened? They brought back like too many legends, right? I don't even think it was that. You know, a lot of people blame that. I I don't think it mm. was the legends that because if you think about this, like you got. Angle, you got Hogan, you got Flair, you got mm-hmm. Foley, you got Booker T, you got Sting, you got uh Kevin Nash, you got all these guys. All you got the Dudleys, you got Rob Van Dam, uh, you got all these Gary guys. Gary Lynn was in company. there for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, just top to bottom, just major, mm-hmm. major stars. And they still couldn't get it together and really has to do with the fundamentals of the company, not the talent. Mm-hmm. It was the fundamentals of the company. They just didn't have. Absolutely. They didn't have it together 
to put on a logical show. They just couldn't do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. they had unbelievable matches, but and listen, everybody blames Hogan and Bischoff. Like they they did not do I think they brought more prominence to the company than anything else. I think so too. But it was also like a lot of a lot of the stuff that they did was kind of like re- almost like relying on your legends too much. Uh I think like Flair officially had his last match in TNA. Uh, McFoley officially had his last match in TNA. Hogan officially had his last match in TNA, right? Yeah. Um, possibly Booker T. No, Booker right? did WWE after that. Okay, he came back. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I just thought that was kind of like a weird thing. Instead of concentrating on like the dudes who are attracting the audience, they went a little backwards and depended on like the older guys. But it did work out in that Jeff Hardy Sting situation, oddly enough. So it's very just like oddly run, right? Very oddly run. Uh, very, very oddly run. It, it was a. Uh, I also think being in that the impact zone didn't help them. You know, same same Oof, issue. No. TN, uh, same issue that NXT has, right? We see what it's like yeah. to be in front of the same people in a in a sound stage essentially every single week. And mm-hmm. when you compare it to a bigger product like WWE. You know, WWE's running, you know, a, a 20,000 person, 15,000 person building and you're running a yeah. few hundred people. You'll never be on the same level. And I think that's the problem that NXT has right now with AEW. It, yeah, except, visually, go ahead. right? Visually. Yeah. I think the once a year when they went, when TNA went to England, they drew big numbers, right? They Huge. were, they were selling out like a 15,000, 16,000 seat arena. Dude, I got to tell you, the ratings were always good in England. Um, mm-hmm. If you look at our, and this this is years ago, right? When TNA and Impact was was still, uh, mm-hmm. not so much Impact now, but pre, pre everything. TNA, mm-hmm. whenever we would say something negative about TNA, it was always like English dudes defending it. Oh, 100%. And, and the product was hot in England. It was tremendous in mm-hmm. England. And it really was a backbone. The ratings were really good. It just, what are you going to do? Yeah, mm. You're an American company. You can't run England all the time. I mean, yeah, and you like also had like, uh, it, it was very, it's very fascinating because there was so much fun stuff in TNA in retrospect that it was kind of like disappointing that it never really went anywhere, right? Um, the Jay Lethal uh, Macho Man stuff was awesome. You had Shark Boy. Uh, most of the Abyss stuff was pretty good, and then he did the Chris Parks thing. Uh, what was what was your most enjoyable time of TNA? Uh, my most enjoyable time in TNA, I uh, probably the early stuff, like all that X Division stuff. Okay, that had to be that. I mean, the X Division stuff had to be great. I mean, that was. Uh, a lot of the early ones, mm. right? A lot of those early Chris Chris Daniels and AJ Styles matches, a lot of the Samoa Joe stuff. That was great. After that, it, mm. nothing really uh, stood out. We had low key also involved in that. Like a lot of like guys who were really just grinding their teeth to to make it to like a main event, right? Yeah. The Kurt, yeah. The Kurt Angle feuds were always top to bottom great in TNA. Yeah, he had a great career over there. I, mm. I, I think that that's something that people forget. He had an amazing mm. uh, semi-career in TNA. And, and the reality yeah. is it's not really talked about like right now. Unfortunately. And we yeah. never got to see the... I would have thought they would... I would have thought they would have done the Angle Joe stuff when Joe got signed to WWE. You know, like that would have been... I thought so too. I feel like that would have could have headlined any pay-per-view, right? Yeah, Joe Angle, you're right. Joe Angle was probably the best program they put together organically. Organically. Um and also Ken Anderson. Ken Anderson, I I dude, he, he I never I was never into him. He had even a great TNA career. Even in WWE. Uh really why why not? It was too much. It it, it was it was weird. I I just never got it. Everybody said he was the next it, Steve Austin, and I hate those comparisons. Mm. And did you not never... like the name thing? They did it twice. I hated the name thing twice. <laughs> so one of my friends right now, I'm assuming their kid mm. has their phone. 
because they're sending me incoherent stuff and they've called about 18 times while we're doing the show oh wow yeah you want to just answer it and end the show no no it's it's not him it's, it's <laughs> you could tell uh what else do we have any other questions send us your last questions here mm -hmm. we've been doing this for 89 minutes baby Are, have we Hour yeah. 18, yeah all right give us your last questions and then we'll uh we'll wrap it up here uh people say 2006 to 2009 i'd love to do like a little i want to go back and kind of see what they were doing i totally forgot what tna was doing at this point mm. see my memory for wrestling anything from the mid-2000s like 2007 mm -hmm. on to about 2011 is gone. I have no memory of any of it. Okay. It's so weird. I don't know why. That's when you started doing the hard drugs. That's when I, that's when it kicked in. Mm. Uh, lots of mushrooms, lots of DMT. <laughs> a lot of, DMT. <laughs> a lot of psychedelics. Yeah. I just hang out with Joe Yo, Rogan and just take DMT. Let's do some DMT and watch a pay-per-view together. Let's see what happens. Oh, man. That would be fast. You think we'd get, you think we'd get kidnapped by the Anunnaki's? Oh, uh, I think they. they would you think we'd meet in the room? You think we'd meet the Anunnaki's together, 100%. like a shared hallucination? Hundred percent, they would show up. That'd be great. I would love that. I would love to share that experience with you. All right, I guess. And we're then we're done just with gone. <laughs> <laughs> I love to. I, all right. I love to do all of it. All right, guys. Uh, that's it. Listen, we'll be back on Saturday, uh, yeah. doing a live watch along. So join us on Saturday. I'll have all the links in the chat room. I'll have all the links everywhere. Obviously, you can follow Rich, BTC Rich on Twitter. Follow me at Andrew Zarian on Twitter. Uh, I tweet about wrestling. I tweet about tech and nonsense, essentially. And the Sopranos. A lot of Sopranos talk. I do oh, oh my God. You have no idea. I love the Sopranos. Uh, I don't know. What time are we starting to watch along? Uh, <laughs> we'll be doing our Sopranos ASMR on Saturday night as well. Dude, um, let's do it. Let's do a Sopranos ASMR. Christopher. 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 Oh, what timing? What? Christopher. Um, tell Sill. Go tell to the bank. Six uh, thirty. He got the virus, Chrissy. <laughs> I think. Uh, I think it starts at. Seven is the pre-show at seven. Yeah, pre-show seven o'clock. All right. Uh, cool. So we'll be there for we'll the pre-show. We'll, we'll be hanging out with you guys, uh, having a good time again on Saturday night. So uh, join us for hell this. yeah, and we'll see you all next time. Take care.